today we have gathered here to be discussing about the devops and its importance in the management the organization level and uh, before getting into the topic let me introduce myself my name is anil kumar i have a 17 plus years of it experience currently working as a senior project manager in the cloud computing and devops implementation and I've completed my professional certifications like the Prince2 Practitioner, CSM, PSM, ITIL, Six Sigma, Greenbelt, and have an extensive experience in the training and consulting from the last six years onwards and giving the trainings on classroom trainings and giving corporate trainings, conducting the workshops, webinars, and everything on the current and the emerging technologies. And I have a work uh, five years on-site experience where I was uh, worked at client location with the uh, German, UK, and US clients, where I was exposed to different methodologies and the practices they are following in their project implementation. So, which I can able to be share those uh, the new methods and the methodologies and the practices we are implementing in the project development. I'll be sharing with you all people guys. Now, let's get into the topic for the day: is DevOps. As you all know that from some, some of you people might be coming from the different backgrounds. Some people are from, coming from the non-technical. Some people are coming from the different domains. Uh, like suppose now they are working in the networking domain. They would like to be transfer their domain into your DevOps domain. They want to transfer their domain into the DevOps, so which is quite easy in this one. So here, this DevOps is a buzzword quite from the few years. Why? Because many of the organizations are recruiting the resources who are having the skill set of DevOps. What makes the difference? That means that with the help of the DevOps, what makes the difference in your project development? So for example, before DevOps implementation also, we have developed the projects. But what makes the difference with the implementation of this DevOps in your project now? Now, here, why the organizations are recruiting the resources who are having the skill set of this DevOps. So, here, DevOps, mostly you people might be coming across a definition from your YouTube or from the web, uh, web domain. DevOps is a collaboration between the development and operation teams, which enables continuous delivery of applications and the services to our end users. That means, I mean to say, most of us, what is DevOps means most of your people will be thinking like the development and operations. But what this development and operations people will do, who are involving in this DevOps, who are involving in the operations team, these are all the things we need to be first understanding. It's a collaboration. That means before uh, the DevOps implementation, these development between people and operations team people are working in an individual basis. But with this one, both this DevOps method, this DevOps method of methodology, which brings that both the teams will be working together for the common goal of the organization. So let me show you here. Who are involving in the development team and who are involving in the operations team? In the development team, developers, UI designers, testing engineers, QA engineers, build engineers, release engineers, release managers, support manager, engineers, and well as program managers. So, these people who are initiating the project, build the project, design the project, test the project, and after that, once the application has been get built, they are hand over this application to your operations team. Okay, they will be giving this application to your operations team. These operations team people, like your system admins, network admins, middleware admins, storage admins, and the deployment engineers are there. What these people will do is, they are taking this build application, they are taking this build application and deploying this build application into your data center, where your hundreds and hundreds of servers are there. Here, their application have been get deployed. So the end users like us, when we are hitting the URL like your ICCBank.com, it is getting connected to the data center and your request is going to be get processed and sending back that response to your browser. So this is how it works in the backgrounds. So these are the individual teams. Now both the teams are working together as a single team here this one. Now observe carefully here, what is meant by a software? So most of us, we know that what is meant by software means, 
the development process of transforming your client requirements into a complete software product. The client is coming up with an abstract ideas. So where he would like to be developing that application, which he can able to be use that software to run his business. Now, suppose now net banking application we have developed. So suppose we develop an application for the ICIC bank. They want to, they, uh, whatever the manual services they are giving, they want to make their services to be online. And for that one, they would like to be developing the software. So with that one, they have given the, they're transforming that requirement. That means the, as a software development organization, whatever the client has been, client has been given the requirements to us, we are transforming those client requirements into a complete software product. So the DevOps is a combination of the practices and the tools which designed to be increasing an organization's ability to be delivering the software applications and the services faster than the traditional software development process. Earlier, everything is manual process here, guys, but now we are going to be developing your applications and delivering that services quick to the market. For example, suppose now you people, uh, whenever you, if you want to book the movie tickets, what is the first thing which is strikes in your mind? The book my show. If you want to book your bus tickets, what is the first thing which is strikes in your mind? Red bus. Why only these two applications are striking in our mind? Why not others? Because the similar kind of an applications, there are multiple applications are available in the market. Because why only these two things are striking in most of your users' mind is because this kind of an unique services first time introduced into the market by these applications. That is why it is giving the more impact on the user's mind. So any unique services which we are developing and delivering the services and getting the services quick to the market, which is having the much impact in the market. They are having that organization will be having, grabbing the maximum market. So that is an advantage what we'll be getting the best. Now the DevOps goal is to be shorten the development life cycle and provide the consistent delivery of high quality software by bridging, by bridging the development and IT operations skills. So that is why the main goal of your DevOps is to be shorten the development life cycle. Earlier to developing your application, minimum it is taking 10 to 15 months of time. Even a small web application to be taken develop, it is taking minimum 10 to 15 months of time. It was worked earlier days. That means I'm talking about 10, 15 years back. But now the market was drastically changed with this market. So the uh, organizations, the client wants their applications or the services. They want to get their services developed and delivered quick to the market. So this is what every client wants. So that is why this DevOps methodology, when we are implemented in any of the current projects, we can able to be delivered in your applications and getting their services quick to the market. Yes. Example, if you can see that one, initially when we are launching any project, suppose now take an example, the Flipkart. The Flipkart, first time it was introduced into the market, it is having the minimal features. Up. That means to run your any e-commerce business, what are all the minimum features are there with required the website? And apart from that one, we are we require the registration module, login module, as well as we are in the product catalog and the product catalog list payment gateway page. So these are some of the services which is needed for any e-commerce applications which we are delivering to the end users. So in such cases, what happens is initially when it was launched, these are the minimal services are there in the flip card. But later, once it clicks in the market, once the flip card is fixed in the market, it's success, uh, it is gets success in the market, then slowly as per the market competency, as per the market competency, it is coming up and developing the new services eventually. That means every month they are delivering the new services. So whenever they are delivering the new services every month, whenever they are delivering the new services every month, we know that one will be receiving the notifications, kind of an application notifications every month, whether it is a mobile application or the web applications we are using. Whenever we are getting the notifications, when you click on that notification link, the new services, the application will be upgraded, new services and the new themes will be getting into it, right? 
So in the back end, these DevOps team people, the DevOps methodology have been implemented. Because of that, we can able to be getting the new services very quickly into the market. Not only this one, we also uh, watching the movies on uh, OTT, most of us, right? Every week, the new movies will be get reflected. The new movies have been upgraded and the new web series will be upgraded. So how these new things will be getting upgraded in it? Have you ever seen that the Netflix application is completely down? Any, uh, any OTT application like a Disney Monster or Amazon, anything, Amazon Prime, any kind of a thing, have you ever seen that application is down to uploading these new services, new movies? On the run, in the backend, these DevOps team people, they are going to be deploying this new movies, new code, new uh, new services, new web series, everything will be getting included, into, getting upgraded into the application servers. So DevOps practices which enable your software development and operations team people to accelerate the delivery through automation, collaboration, fast feedback and iterative improvement levels. That means we are not developing the complete application at once. We are developing your applications through iterations. Every month we are delivering the new services. This is how we are developing the software development process will be going on this one. Now, next one, coming back to this here. Here, the primary objective of adopting your DevOps methodology is fully carry out the software development process internally as well as to make the procedures faster, reliable, and with high quality software. The services which we are going that means with the help of this adopting the DevOps methodology in your project, we can able to be delivering the software. We can able to be delivering the software most reliable and the robust applications with high quality of the software we are able to be delivering. So that is what every client who wants their applications to be delivered faster, delivered with the high quality of services, every client wants. DevOps is a combination of DevOps with the combination of the software development and operations, which is defined as a software engineering methodology, which majorly actually integrating with the work of development teams and operations teams by facilitating a culture of the collaboration and the shared responsibility. That means with the proper collaboration between the development and operations team people, with the proper coordination, with the proper communication, they can able to be delivered the project more quickly in this, right? DevOps is a practice of operations and the development engineers participating together in the entire service life cycle of the project. So from designing through the entire development process, all the way to be deployed to production support. This is what's happening here. That means it's a practice. DevOps is not a technology, I guess. DevOps is a, DevOps is not a technology, but DevOps is a methodology. It's a culture and a cultural enhancement, right? Now here, if you can see, the demand for the DevOps person has been great rise in the IT industry in the last decade. So not only that one, majorly we are going to be developing them. Uh, every year, new organizations are adopting these DevOps and developing these applications. Develop, develop, implementing the DevOps in their project management. And DevOps is a set of best practices which aim to improve the collaboration between your development team and operations team. This is the reason why we need the DevOps in project management. Here, DevOps is not a tool, not a technology, it's a methodology, cultural enhancement, the process enhancement here is. Okay, next one, if you can see why we are implementing the DevOps we'll see this. scalability. E-commerce applications are load balancing. That means, suppose now, any organization, any business, people, they want to increase their business, right? Suppose now, in my classroom, I have the 30 members are there. Suppose now another 50 members, they would like to be get into my class. They would like to be get into my classroom. So what I do, if my capacity, classroom capacity is only 30. If 50 members are there outside, they also want to be joining my class. So for that, what happened here is, suppose now if I ask them to be, so wait for another two months, so you can come and join in my classroom. So do you think that those two, uh, 50 members are going to be wait for two months? They're not, they're not going to be paid for another two months. So I have to be see the, any other possibility, the scalability here that how I can be able to be accommodating another 50 members along with these 30. 
I can see that one extending my classroom so that I can accommodate 50 plus 30, 80 members in my classroom. That is how the every organization also wants to do their business. Now here the scalability here. So scalability is nothing but here. You can see e-commerce application the load balance. So any of the business, any organization or any business guy who wants to be scale up their business as per the load which is coming on it, as per the market competence. For example, as I said just now an example, like here, suppose now in my classroom we are having the 30 members out there. Apart from this one, another 50 members who would like to be get into my classroom. In case if suppose now if I'm asking my classroom capacity is 30 members, I can I can't accommodate the 50 members, another additional 50 members. If that is the case, what is if I'm asking the another 50 members who are standing outside who want to be joining my classroom, if I ask them wait for another two months, you can join in my classroom. Do you think that those people are going to wait for another two months? So I have to be see the other possibility is that how I can able to, able to be accommodate that extra 50 members into the same classroom. I extend my classroom. So that is how the scaling up scaling up my classroom so that I can accommodate the additional members into my classroom. This is how it works. Not only this one, any kind of a business you might be thinking. So this scalability is mandatory. Guys. Scalability of your application, scalability of your business, increasing your business. If suppose now in one or in at one place in one city, your business is working fine. Now there are some requests from the uh, other other men, other city from the other uh, other city from the other states. They also want your services to be reflecting there also. In that case, what you people do? You are also going to be starting another another branch into the other state, correct? So that you are extending your business there. That is how every businessman will be looking at it. Similarly, here scalability in every business is mandatory. Yes. Next one, here high availability. High availability in the sense, if you are increasing your application, scalability is fine. But at the same time, availability, high availability of your application is also there. If suppose now you are giving the good services, you are giving the good services, your office is good, your uh, shop, everything is working fine. You are giving the services is good. But inconsistently, if you are opening the shop in the morning 10 o'clock and in between uh, 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock, you are closing down again in the evening around. So what happened with this inconsistency of your timings, some of the customers who are visiting the shop by the time the shop is closed. Though you are giving the good quality services, quality products, but if you are not maintaining the consistency, no one will be repeated. Correct. Here also high availability of your application. Any kind of an you know, e-commerce business or any kind of an OTT or any kind of a business now applications you can take it. The banking sector or the insurance sector, anything. We are having the high availability. Suppose now in the middle of the night, if you are not getting the sleep, you want to watch the Netflix movie. Netflix application is available or not? If you want to transfer some amount on medical uh, medical emergency, if you want to transfer some amount to your friend. In the middle of the night, can you able to use the banking services? Right? Is it possible? So, like that one, high availability of your application 24 by 7, 365 days, you have to be delivered the services. Then only you will be your business will be get fixed. Now, how many of you people are visiting the banks nowadays? If you are having the applications through the applications, we are getting our services and get the things done. It is saving our time. That is most precious, right? Next one, high availability. If you are having the scalability and high availability, that is enough. No. Apart from this one, you have to be delivered the continuous services. As per the market competency, you need to be delivered the continuous services, what the market is expecting from you. Suppose now WhatsApp is there. WhatsApp is monopoly. We know that but most of the most of uh, across the world, most of the people are using the WhatsApp services. If suppose it is thinking that, okay, I'm the monopoly in the market. So I'll be get relaxed for the next six months. 
it is not delivering any kind of new services. In this meantime, its competitor will be coming up with the new unique services. Within no time, WhatsApp will be out of it. If suppose now any new application, if it is coming with this um, uh, having some unique feature better than WhatsApp, what we people will do? Most of us will be migrating towards that new application, right? So that kind of a competency what we have in this market here is. That is why the business team people they should not be get relaxed what the services are expecting, what the market is expecting from us, from from us through our application. We have to be delivered the services continuously. Clear the consistency which is always giving you the success and giving you the results as well, guys. Similarly, continuously we need to be giving the services here, delivering the services apart from the and continuous delivery of the services, and we also we should have the security. Protecting your applications. Now we know that one, the Netflix, the last year it is running on loss in India. Why? One username and password, multiple users will be logged in. Right? So most of the people have been logged in like that. So they will be getting the no uh, more subscriptions they are not getting. So with that one, what happens? They will be getting into the loss. Now they have introduced into a security feature into it. One device, one username, password only. No others can be logged in into that. So in that case, this is your application. If you are attacking uh, your Facebook or the LinkedIn account or Instagram account is hacked, will it be possible for any other users to start using that application? No. Right? So that is why you should have the security layer should be there. So that security feature is also should be there. So with the help of DevOps implementation, we can able to be scalability, implementing the scalability, high availability, continuously delivering the survey of your application to them. Now if you can see this one here. Before implementation of this DevOps, let me explain this here. How before implementation of the DevOps, how this uh, the process will uh, process in the project management, and what is the need of implementation of the DevOps is required. Let me discuss that. Now you, should, you know that one earlier before DevOps implementation, the developers develops that code and push that code into the SCM. SCM is source code management here. Source code management. So, what is the source code management? That means all your project source code will be placed within the central code repository. Okay. All your developers. Suppose now we you people are the developers. You people are working on the individual task. Once you are completing your individual task, where you are going to be placed that code? You are not going to be placed it in your the central repository. You are not going to be placed it in your laptop only. You have to be placed it in some some central repository so that your project will be moving forward. Otherwise, if you are keeping your task code into your uh, laptop or the desktop, your project will not be moved on. So that is why here the developers, all the developers, suppose now here we have a 10 developers are there, 10 developers who are working on it, they are completing that code and after that they push their code into the source code management. Earlier we are having the tools like SVN and CBS, subversion network and the central version system. Now, after that, we have the building is there. Building people, they are pulling that code from the source code management. And here, they are going to be compiling that code, integrate with your existing code, build your application, and generating the executable files like your .exe and .msi files. Clear? Executable files. Suppose now in your laptop, if you want to uh, use a Chrome browser, what do you do? You will be downloading the Chrome browser software and you start using that one, installing that one. So it is downloading the Chrome EXE file. Suppose now, Chrome. Now you are downloading the software here. Okay. When you are downloading the software,
start with this. Now, when you are downloading this one, you'll be getting into this Chrome application. See, Chrome setup, which is downloaded, which is how much? 1.3 MB Chrome application data. So when you are installing that one, a Chrome application will be get it installed. And here, if you can see, it is having the multiple features. Are These are all the features. It's like an application one. But we have downloaded that one with 1.3 MB only, correct? 1.3 MB space only. That means all the code which they have been written, that means the Chrome has been developed using the different languages. It might be a Java, it might be PHP or the Python, any kind of a language they might be used. They develop that application. But when you want to use that Chrome application, they are not going to be giving all the source code to you. They'll be generating one artifact called executable file dot exe or dot msi file. Now you people are downloading the applications, mobile applications and installing that dot apk extension, right? So that is an executable file. If you are using that one, if you are installing that executable file, you can able to be access the application. So here also the same thing would happen. This exe file will be get generated by this built-in. But here, everything is manual here. See, when the, once in a, in a project, if a big project, we are having the thousands of files will be there. So every time when they are compiling that code, integrating with a new code, suppose our developers in the next week, they are writing some other code, they're adding around 100 files are there. So we are integrating with your existing code. That means already 1000 files are there. And after that, these 100 files, extra, uh, 100 files, new files need to be integrating with your existing code. That means total 1100 files, they need to be compiled manually early before automation introduced. So there is a lot of time have been consumed in this one. This is one of the reason why earlier to developing a small web application also, it is taking minimum 10 to 15 months of time. Okay. After that, it is deployed into the testing server. Earlier, test, uh, the testing team also, they are writing the manual test cases. They'll be executing the manual test cases. Once they execute the manual test cases, if they're getting the negative results, they will be generating this test results for the bug report, sending it to your developers. It is taking five to seven days of time. So what happened during this five to seven days of time? What these people will do, the developers will do. They are sit now sitting idle, which is not possible, right? Everyone will be observes you, your team lead, your project manager, everyone will be observes. That is why your team lead will be assigning the task for the next 15 days. So first task, suppose now the developer has been moved the first task here. During this, getting the test results, he start writing the code on the task to start working on the task. Two. So after that, when he got this test results, then he, if it is having the test one uh, bug reports are there, he will stop working on the task two, open the task one relevant code, resolving, making some changes in the code, resolving that bugs. After that, again, the same process. Now observe carefully, to resolving one issue, to resolve one bug, on an average, it is taking 10 days of time. Think about if you are having the multiple bugs are there, 100 bugs are there, how many days it is taking. That is one of the reasons. So this was, this process have been worked earlier because earlier we are not having this kind of market what we have in the last one decade. The market was drastically changes. So this was worked earlier, 10, 15 years back, this is works. But now the clients are not going to be waiting their projects to be get delivered after two, two years. Earlier they used to be waiting. But here it is, now the clients are not going to be showing any interest if you are following this manual process. No organization, no client is going to be giving the projects to the development organization if you are following this manual process. So then the management experts, they make an analysis in this process, how we can able to be enhancing the process, how we can able to be make this process to be get speed up. What we can do in that way, how we can, how we can able to be reducing this five to seven days of time, how to reduce this five to seven days of time into few hours. They start making an analysis on this one. After that, they come up with this one here. 
here if you can see we reduce this five to seven days of time into a few hours now if you can see guys devops goal is to shorten the development life cycle and provide the consistent delivery of high quality software by bridging development and it operations this is the definition multiple definitions you can find it out but understand step guys okay this is shorten the development life cycle by bridging the gap between the development and operations and delivering the high quality software in a less time now here the developers push their code here, here it is five to seven days of time they will increase the, they will be implementing the automation the source code management this part we have seen already here the build team earlier we are having the build team that has been replaced with this continuously this was this was there earlier right now this build team has been replaced with continuous integration server jenkins ci cd server so here what we need to do is configuring the jenkins jobs here maven ms build and gradient these are your build tools earlier manually we are compiling that code but here with the help of this maven tool we can able to be compiling that code even hundreds of files also there it is compiling within minutes so your work becomes speed up next one it is going to be paid it is going, what it will do is compiling your code integrate with your existing code build your application generate the artifacts jar bar and ar file now here what happens jenkins will be automatically getting connected to the source code management only the developer commits that code into the source code management is manual after that here we are having the github and the bitbucket nowadays we are using these git repositories github repositories now we are jenkins automatically getting connected to the source code management every three hours three hours is not the standard time guys. it is different from organization to organization say in our organization i have instructed my devops team that every three hours as per our company policy i have instructed my team members devops team guys saying that every three hours they need to be jenkins need to be getting connected to the source code management that means github repository within these three hours if any of the developers commits that new code it is pulling that latest code automatically without manual intervention so once it is pulling that code with the help of this maven tool it is compiling your code build your code i mean build your application generating the artifacts automatically once this artifact has been get generated continuously deployment into your testing server once artifact has been generated continuously it is deployed into the testing server in the testing team also they are using the automation test cases now uh, automation tools like your selenium j unit okay uh, test engine so with this one they'll be executing the test cases if they got any bugs are there bug report will be generated by this test engine and uh, the test results will be sending it back to your developers automatically there is no manual intervention once you configuring this jenkins job now observe carefully Developer commits this code in the morning around 11.30. And this complete process will be done and sending this bug report before 2.30 p.m. or 3 p.m. on the same day. Earlier it is taking 5 to 7 days of time. But now it is taking on the same day we will be getting the results. So maximum number of times your services will be getting tested, built, bugs will be getting resolved. So maximum number of bugs will be resolved in this phase itself before getting moving into the staging of the production server. Okay. Now see, in this one, the bug report every time have an individual server, individual server environments, it is working fine. Now observe carefully real-time access. Now I would like to be test my application in the real time. My HDFC application will be not accessed by one or two people. It will be accessed by the thousands and lakhs of people, right? So if thousands of lakhs of people are accessing my application, how my application will be performs that I need to be tested. So for that one, what I need to do is I need uh, I need to be test my application on hundred servers. If in hundred servers, the application will deploy here. But hundred servers, if I want, by my suppose our project is work, our project is uh, requiring the hundred servers to accommodate the hundred servers. So physical servers are there. Physical servers will be quite this much of height each one. So 100 servers to be accommodated in the office, how much office space is required? They need to be purchased extra office space. Okay, not only this one. 
your project is your team is not only doing one your your project is not the only one doing the project there are other project teams they are also required 100 service for them also we providing the 100 service will it be possible for the organizations to be providing that procurement will be given to that uh, so many number of teams not possible but earlier we are having the physical server but now the biggest revolution in the IT industry is the virtualization. Biggest revolution in your IT industry is virtualization here. Hypervisor, VMware, Oracle VMs. So now one big VMs where VMware server, I can accommodate the 10 servers. Like that one, to accommodate the 100, ser 100 servers, I can require, I, I'll be requiring only 10 servers, 10 VM servers. So which I can accommodate, half of this room is more than enough. Maintenance cost is also come to yes. fine. Now I have uh, recruiting this other so server hundred servers have been placed. Now in hundred servers, I need to be deploy this application. Hundred servers, so I need to be deploy this application. In one server, if I want to deploy this HDMC application, in one server, if I want to if I deploy this application either, I didn't need to be installed in the Java, JBoss, Oracle. Nginx, Tomcat, Maven, and all these tools I need to be installed to make that application run. To configure in one server, it is taking minimum three hours. I need to be accommodated, I need to be do the same kind of work in 100 servers. 100 into 3, 300 hours. 300 hours is a quite a good, big time nowadays when, the, when we are living in an era of automation. And this is a repetitive process. It's not one, one time process. Next month we are developing the new services. Again, these new services code need to be deployed into the 100 servers again. So this is a repetitive process. We need to be make this process to be automated. Correct. So here we got the configuration management tools like your Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Salstack. These are the tools we are going to be using. And here we are going to be writing the automation scripts. With these automation scripts, we can able to be writing, let me see, automation scripts used to be calling it as a playbooks or cookbooks, bash, JSON and YAML script we are using. With this one, we are writing this automation scripts. With this automation script, we can able to be deploy and configure this HDFC application to 100 servers within minutes. That is an advantage we are having. The patch updates activity, every two to four weeks, we used to be do the patch updates activity. That means in the two weeks, whatever the services code we have built, tested, everything has been done, we are going to be deployed into the production server. Suppose now you people are using the Instagram, Facebook, and other websites, uh, applications, right? Social websites. So every month they'll be coming up with the new services will be getting reflected, correct? So how those new services will be reflected using this process without taking the downtime, your application is going to be deployed into your production servers and that new services will be getting reflected and you people are using the services, correct? Okay. Now after that, we are deploying into the, that means into the production service. Now after deploying into the staging and the pre-production server, after that we are going to be tested again to ensuring that the services are running as per expectations. Then we are going to be deployed into your production server. Clear guys, it is deployed into your production server. So so using the containerization concept, Docker and the Kubernetes, we are going to use. Very happening full stage, this one. If you are having the skill set of this Docker, Kubernetes, Jenkins, Ansible, there is a lot of jobs waiting outside. Organizations are always looking for the proper skill set person. Now we have Docker and Kubernetes. Docker, which is going to be maintaining the consistency of your application. Application of how it works in the development environment. Similarly, it works in the other environments where your application has been accessing. Right from your development server, Jenkins, testing, as well as staging, pre-production, production and the maintenance. Application will be maintaining the consistency. So for that one, Docker, we are using the Kubernetes for the high availability of your application, maintaining the high availability of your application, load value. All these things can be managed by this Kubernetes. Now we are, after that, monitoring team people, last one, they are monitoring the application which is running in the production server. 
So this monitoring team people, they monitor this application. If thousands of more load which is coming on your application, suppose now 10,000 users at a time, uh, users are accessing this HDFC application. When HDFC application have been accessing 10,000 people, more load is coming on it. When more load is coming on it, how it has to be scaled? That means how it is, how uh, the application is performing, how that application is performing. That is going to be monitored by this monitoring team. And they are generating a feedback report here. Three categories, bug fixes, enhancements, new fixes. Bug fixes, we know that one errors to be getting fixed. Enhancements means already in the HDFC, that service is running, but they want the more quality on it. That is enhancements, betterment. New feature. Suppose now I'm a HDFC bank account holder. I will browse the ICIC bank, SBI, and other banking applications also. In those banking applications, suppose now, some of the features are striking. So I want those features also should be there in my SDFC bank. So I'll put the request in front of the customer care and they will be taken to the management. And like me, the other HDFC bank holders, account holders, they are also putting the similar kind of a request in front of them. They will be taking this request to the management and management will be considering that request and they will be generating the new features and giving it to your development team Developers have started working on it. Again, the same process is like this. Now, if you can observe here, guys, the total process, what we have achieved is the process has been enhanced. The process has speed up. Now, only the developer commits that code into the source code management that this process only we did manual. Remaining part, everything is automated. Now, see here, here we are having the GitHub and the Bitbucket. Jenkins server is there, automation build tools, and after that, testing server, automation build tools, automation tools are there, virtualization tools, configuration management tools to deploy your application to the number of servers, and to maintain the consistency, high availability of your application, we are using the container relation, monitoring the tool, monitoring tool, like your Maggio, Scrapana, Prometheus, ELK, Stack, Sensu, like many other tools are there, using that, they are monitoring the application. Now, in the total process, the management, the client is happy here. Why? The client is having the flexibility to give the new requirements and the development of your application and delivering that application is quite quick. Quite often we'll be getting, getting the release cycles. With this one, what happens? With this one, the, the client is happy. Client satisfaction is there in this one. And the success rate of your project also in implementation of this DevOps is more than 85 to 90 percentage. That is why most of the clients want their applications to be getting developed using DevOps and the cloud implementation of it is. Here is, this is how it works. And here all the servers we are going to be using, the, all the servers we are going to be implementing in this one are cloud computing only, AWS or Azure, anything you can able to make it. Any cloud service providers, we can able to use it. But in the real time, majorly we are using the AWS, Azure, ECP. We are having other service providers also there, like your uh, IBM Cloud is there, SoftLayer is there, and Oracle Cloud is there, Alibaba, like many are there. But out of all these things, majorly we are using AWS and the Azure, uh, GCP, some projects we are using, but majorly you are using uh, 80, 90% 80, will be shared by these two. Uh, AWS in action. Okay. And uh, any queries are there, please do ask me. Higher end configuration if you have server, we can we can accommodate it. VMware, like VMware higher, higher end service. It will be quite expensive also. Now see what I can uh, give this one here is in our program. Of course, you people receiving the uh, content also. First, we are going to be discussing the project management. One need to be understand that what we are what we have in this one means first we are going to be discussing SDLC. Okay, it's strong. After that, DevOps website.
and some real time scenarios where we are implementing the implementation of types. The next one. The next one we are going to be using the Linux. Here we have the Linux shell script. Linux is mandatory, guys, to learn any kind of service. So, if you want to get into your IT, Linux is mandatory because in the real time we are having the Linux server somewhere. Okay. Shell scripting. Next, Git and GitHub, Maven, Jenkins, Ansible. Docker, Kubernetes, Terraform, and Magius. Okay. And apart from this one, here we are going to be daily runtime nodes you will be receiving. Runtime, classroom nodes. Next one, recordings, of course, you people are receiving. Apart from this one, once your shell scripting has been yet completed, I'm going to be giving you the Weekly assignments. It's for your betterment, guys. So you might be thinking, sir, after our uh, academic has been done, still, or if we are going to be using the assignments, you have to do. You are stepping out from the academic, but now you have to be getting into the professional environment. So it is better for you if you more practice, more expertise you will be getting this. Okay, and uh, tool-wise, interview questions will be discussing every Saturday. Interview questions. We'll be discussing every Saturday. On that week, what are which tool we have completed in that tool? We are going to be discussing the interview questions. What kind of an interview questions are asking in the market? Next one, two real-time projects we are going to be discussing. Okay, two real-time projects we are going to be discussing how we are going to be integrating the project, integrating these tools, developing the projects. So and in all the tools, real time scenarios only, we are going to do this. So, by the completion of this course, you can able to keep an experience of around three plus years of three plus years of DevOps engineer experience guy. What are all the things he can be capable to do that one? You can able to do that. One. So that kind of stuff I can give you. Okay. As you people are uh, later you have joined, I have an, uh, I'm a real-time employee working as a senior DevOps engineer, having a 17 plus years of IT experience. Okay, so most of my experience I'm going to be sharing with you. And the DevOps total IT experience is 17 plus, and the relevant experience in the DevOps is uh, 2017 onwards and seven years I'm working in this completely DevOps. Earlier I was worked as a uh, Java developer. And uh, Visual Basic, Cold Fusion, PHP, and after that, uh, Agile Scrum, Agile Coach. Then I'm getting into this course. Okay, so these are all the things we are going to be providing you. These are the services I can formulate. My interview questions, runtime classroom notes I'll be providing. And uh, tomorrow onwards, we can have the uh, sessions. They'll be intimate to you, the timings and everything. Tomorrow onwards, we'll be starting the session. And uh, Go through that before classes and then you can decide it. So, if you have any kind of queries relevant to your career, relevant to so what kind of an experience we want, we, we, we would like, we would like to be have into this one. Is there any other skill set is required to be getting into this DevOps? You can ask me, I'm happy to be answering. So, most of the people might be thinking that, sir, do we require any programming skills for this? Programming skills is different. Programming, you're in type. Programming, high level programming, low level programming. High level programming is the developers who are writing the code to developing the application. Java, .NET, okay, PHP, these kind of languages where it is required to developing your application. So you don't, you are not a developer, you are a DevOps engineer. What I said, you are going to be, these people are developing your application and build that application and hand it over to the operations team. And you take this application, deploy it into this number of environments in an automated way. Suppose now here we have the 
different environments are there, then it can be deployed. Deployed into the testing server. So automatically it has to be deployed. Earlier we used to be writing the writing the writing the code to be deployed. But here we need to be write the automation script, which is I'll make you easy here. Throughout this uh, program, I'm going to be uh, train you on the shell scripting, which is very much important. Shell scripting to write the automation scripts, YAML scripting, Ruby script. I'll be explain it from the scratch. Trust me, guys. You people easily write the automation scripts by the end of this course. But there is a star mark condition supply. If you practice daily four to five hours, you have to take out your time and don't give the reasons like what the schoolboy will do. Sir, in a class, look at the current way in me. I don't listen all these things. Whatever the work we have given, try to be complete. It is better for you, not for me. I have given the, I have taken the batches, I have handled the batches more than 85 batches, 85 plus batches. And those who are hard work, they have been placed. They are, those people are coming from the non-technical background also. Now they are working as a senior DevOps engineer, drawing the package of around 20 lakhs package. It's all other people also coming from the DevOps background, technical background also, but they are not organized discipline. They are not practiced properly. They are not getting that much of package. They are sustaining the package 10 to 12 lakhs package. See in the IT organization, how much you do the hard work, how can you skill up yourself? You will be having that much of package. And there is no look back for DevOps and the cloud computing in the nearby future. 10 to 15 years, there is no look back. See, five years back, we are not having the Kubernetes. Now we got the Kubernetes. Likewise, next three, four years, we might be getting the other tools, other DevOps tools. So that if you know all these things, no need to be go for the other DevOps tools to be learned to any institute. You can learn if you have the patience, and you can learn with the documentation, you can learn from there. Also. Advanced? Advanced courses after DevOps. DevOps with cloud computing. Linux, see, roadmap to get the job is Linux, Agile Scrum, DevOps, and the AWS. This is a roadmap to get the job. And after you're getting the job, you have to be skill up yourself another cloud computing service, which I can suggest you the go for Azure. Because major projects are running on AWS and Azure now. So the organizations are looking for this skill set. And after you are gaining an experience of one year, one, one project has been get completed, then I suggest you to go with the prominent uh, certifications. Don't go with MTech and all these things, not use. Those days have been gone. Okay. VTech is enough. Okay. After that, three, four years, after three or four years, if you want to do any management relevant MBA, you can do it. It will be useful down the line in your career. And uh, after one project has been yet completed, start uh, completing your projects, uh, completing uh, your certifications in the relevant technologies, like your solution architect, the DevOps engineer certificate, like your Docker, uh, Docker professional, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes, you are having the certification, Terraform, you are having the certifications. So these certifications will be helpful for you to get more. You can demand in the um, in interview. So if you are opting, uh, if you are uh, asking them, uh, I require the 20 lakhs of package. If I'm asking the why I have to be paid the 20 lakhs of package, now then you have to be say yes, these I am capable of. These are all my skill set. So these are my experience. So where I have the demand of in the in the market like 20 lakhs package. So like that one you can demand it. But if you are not having the uh, experience properly, if you are not having this uh, uh, certifications, and your friend is drawing the 20 lakhs package, and if I am asking, so why I have to be 20 lakhs? My friend is also getting the 20 lakhs, and he's also beat it. So I am also should get the 20 lakhs package. Do you think that the, those people are going to be given? Based upon your skill set, the kind of a certifications what you people are having, company is going to be paid for it. Clear? Any queries?
regarding the program, don't worry about that. From the scratch, I'm going to be explaining. You can easily understand that. Step by step, I'm going to be explaining. Even if it is 10, 15 days before, if it is getting delayed, also not a problem. But I'm, I want my students to be learning the things once the classroom has been get completed. Once they step outside of, the, of my classroom, they should be getting the satisfaction that yesterday I have learned this topic. I'll be keep asking the questions in the classrooms. There are my general questions are with the Then I'll do the If I'm asking such questions here, then it will be in a habit for you. Yes, go through that before coming to the class, go through that previous session. And if you are having any queries, go through the recordings, prepare your own notes. And if you are having any queries are there before starting the next day class, in the first 10, 15 minutes. You people can ask me the queries, we'll clarify those queries, then we'll be jump into the next topic. Clear? That's all for the day, guys. Those who are online, any queries are there? Om Prakash. No, sir, no query. Okay, fine. Vidya? That's all for the day, guys. We'll be meeting in the tomorrow session. Bye now.